Aaron Rodgers told a newspaper in Wisconsin that he's undecided about playing next season. I think it's interesting how Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre have largely, in their playing careers at least, become the same person. Difficult, threatening retirement, undecided, not willing to embrace new coaching styles. I mean, who did Aaron Rodgers want back when Nathaniel Hackett left for Denver? His old 70-year-old quarterback coach. Aaron doesn't want new things. He struggled with rookie receivers. At the end, Favre became very stubborn, and that's sort of what Aaron Rodgers is. Um, I didn't like Aaron Rodgers talking about retirement the previous couple of years um, because I thought, a David Bakhtiari or a Devonte Adams who could on the market fetch a lot of offers or retire. Bakhtiari could retire. He's had injuries. If they don't know if you're going to play, they may just call it quits or like Devonte Adams did leave. Um, the Packers now have their best players locked in and their young players, Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs aren't going anywhere. I do believe that this draft, if you look at the setup of the Packers draft, last year they went and uh, concentrated on some defense and offensive linemen. This draft is set up for them middle of the first um, or a little later if they get into the playoffs and beat the Lions at Lambeau this weekend to go get a Jordan Addison wide receiver at USC first round, get a tight end third round. They could use a safety also mixed in there, maybe an edge rusher. But this this draft has some really nice offensive pieces. I think they need another receiver. I think they need another tight end. I think I would go get another offensive tackle and then safety, defensive end, edge rusher. But I think the Packers at this point are strongly considering, especially if they, especially if they lose to Detroit, I think there will be strong considerations in the building to move Aaron Rodgers. Hell, they cannot make the playoffs with Jordan Love, right? So I, I said this to Nick Wright a couple of days ago on this podcast, is that the dead cap hit is not as punitive if Jordan Love plays for two years because you're not paying him anything. And a lot of their best young players have not gotten the bag yet. So if you can trade Aaron Rodgers and just get a number one pick this year, a number two pick next year, whatever you fetch, if you have two firsts and a second, that's three starters. Green Bay has a history of drafting well. I think you go get a tight end. I think you get a wide. It's a very good tight end class. It's a very good wide receiver class. It's a very good offensive tackle class. Green Bay has a history of drafting those positions fairly well. You hand it over to Jordan Love. I think you got yourself – the best roster still in the division. If Jordan Love is a B quarterback, not A, not B plus. If he's a B, if he's Ryan Tannehill or close to it, I think they're going to consider the move. I mean, you ask yourself, once again, he comes out. I don't know if I want to play. Do you really think these executives are fans of this? Do you think they like it? It's like Wall Street doesn't like the unknown. Even if you have bad earnings, if Wall Street knows they're coming, the stock market doesn't go down. Executives don't like the unknown. And every time Aaron says that, it just comes off to those guys as a power play and cringy. I think if they lose to Detroit, I think, I think the Tennessee Titans and Green Bay will be on the phone within a month. I really do. Now, I think Green Bay is going to win close, but something to keep your eye on. If you keep talking retirement, you're thinking about retirement. Sean McVay, there are rumors that Sean McVay is in line to be a TV analyst after this year. He's going to take a TV job and leave. He would probably, because he's newly married, want to take something that has limited travel. So I think he would do the studio analyst work over the game broadcast, right? Also, I don't think he'd want to criticize players or coaching decisions, and you have to do that on a game broadcast. 
So my takeaway is if Sean Payton left Fox and got a great job, I think we'd probably call Sean McVay. I don't say that with any insight, but that's what I would do if I ran Fox. I'd bring in the local guy, Sean McVay. Um, he'd be great. He's got great energy. He's great looking. He would absolutely be very, very helpful to any network. He also has immediacy. He just won a Super Bowl. So he'd be a great studio guy. I don't think Sean McVay, when you do game broadcasts, there's an art to it. You got to be critical sometimes of coaching decisions. And Sean is young. He's going to return eventually to coaching. I don't think he'd be comfortable doing that. Peyton Manning. That's why they do the Manning cast on ESPN2. You know, he wants to control the broadcast. He doesn't want to be set up to criticize, you know, friends, coaches, um, even some opponents. He wants to be well-liked. So the McVeigh rumors, I just don't think he likes losing twice a year to his rival Kyle Shanahan. And right now the Rams, um, it's not a total rebuild, but they're not close to San Francisco in terms of elite talent unit to unit. They just don't have it. They've had too many um, high-priced players. They're a little thin at different spots, linebacker, offensive line, and their stars, Cooper Cup, Stafford, Aaron Donald, getting older. That's why I think they need to trade Jalen Ramsey and get a number one pick or a first-round pick. So McVay to TV, studio, I get it. Game, I don't. And frankly, studio jobs don't pay that much. They pay well. Terry Bradshaw gets a lot of money, I imagine. But for a one or two year deal, um, to be a studio guy, I think it's an easier job. And maybe McVay, newly married in L.A. every Sunday, that feels like the fit for Sean McVay. But I think long term, he's a coach. Speaking of coaches, Jim Harbaugh released a statement. I'm a Michigan man. Harbaugh is either releasing the leaks to Carolina, Minnesota last year in Denver to help him get a raise at Michigan or help him get a raise in the NFL. I will say this because both jobs have advantages. Uh, in college, you don't have to deal with a billionaire owner. You have great power over your personnel. In the NFL, you don't have to deal with the NCAA, kids taking classes, boosters, and a lot of Silly nonsense. Um, and he can make a lot of money at both. What I've heard, though, through kind of the coaching tree is that the SEC and some Big 12 schools are simply willing to pay more through the NIL. And some of these classic esteemed universities like um, Michigan and Notre Dame. Uh, are not as comfortable writing million-dollar checks to high schoolers. And that some of these coaches, USC, by the way, has a very weak NIL program. Caleb Williams makes a lot and almost nobody else. Because LA's biggest boosters, they don't want to pay off high school kids. In Alabama, car dealer, no problem. Texas Tech, some of these programs, Oklahoma, Car dealers, casino owners, they don't care. They want to win football games. College football defines their entertainment dollar. It doesn't in L.A. Um, and so I, I wonder for Harbaugh, is Michigan a very esteemed university in a good space with NIL? Some of their boosters just may not be comfortable buying high school kids or spending a fortune on a 19-year-old high school freshman or college freshman. So I think Harbaugh is great for college football where coaches are often the stars over their players. But sometimes a college coach is made to feel guilty for making big money. An NFL coach never is. You don't even know what NFL coaches make. So I think that's very attractive to guys like Harbaugh who've always wanted to be well compensated.